intercede for the salvation of his soul. Mercy on us, O God, according to thy great goodness, we pray thee, hearken and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the repose of the soul, of his beatitude, the most blessed Ignatius the fourth. Patriarch of Antioch and of all these, of blessed memory and eternal Christ, blessed memory and eternal rest. Lord God will establish his soul with the just repose, the mercies of God, the kingdom of heaven, the remission of his sins. Let us ask of Christ, our mortal King and our God. He proclaimed, 
have lived in the silence of prayer, prayer and fidelity. Knowing well, as Saint Isaac the Syrian said, that silence is the mystery of the world to come. And of course, being firmly rooted in the liturgical life of the church, he guided us how to be firmly established in worshiping God. He believed that the church carries all humanity in her prayers, and that prayer elevates us to the realm of true faith. He had a deep conviction that the gospel spirit, daring and filling, filled, daring and filled with knowledge, could restore what has been afflicted by obsolescence. If one has knowledge but lacks prayer, not only will he pray in vain, but also his knowledge will be insubstantial. Patriarch Ignatius said, I quote, our doctrines are not merely rational convictions achieved after thinking. They are a concrete reality." End of quote. Knowledge is not a product of spiritual life, but prayer draws everything together and leads to true knowledge. Without prayer, there can be no knowledge. In his enthronement address, he said, I quote, The Spirit takes us to the heart of the Trinity, where we encounter the whole existence and become united as the beloved children of God. End of quote. He believed that, I quote, the Antiochian Sea is apostolic and older than Rome. Thus, Rome expects more from us than we expect from them. In that context, we must remember that Rome is not the Sea of Antioch and that the existence of Rome does not in any way dissolve the Antiochian Orthodox Sea. Our heritage springs from the holy tradition from within. Thus we are neither of Rome or Constantinople. We are the root, not the vine. Being preeminent in his leadership, his orthopraxia was manifested by the fact that he did not build there where establishments had already been constructed. He single-handedly built numerous churches, institutions, and schools, and founded Belamant University. The only institution of higher education in the Orthodox world. In challenging times, he was determined to fulfill his obligation in response to the needs of the witness of the church, stating, I quote, our religious establishments have been erected as a witness to our Lord Jesus Christ, end of quote. While others were busy destroying the Middle East, he was untiringly building institutions of higher learning in order to fulfill his commitment 
to the practice of the faith and to, and to fulfill his priestly ministry. As I studied at his feet, I personally witnessed how he chose to build there where the labor was more and the toil was harder. He lived out his life busy in planting churches, institutions, building churches and institutions in places where no one had ever built. He firmly believed that, I quote, the church that we should be is the one in which her children feel the stream of life, the, re the return of thought, the bosom upon which we rest in order to hear that which is not easy to utter and that which does not occur naturally to the minds of men. The beauty of Christ's church is something entirely different than what people are familiar with in this world. The spirit of Patriarch Ignatius IV is alive and well within the church of Antioch, the one which he yearned to build. I quote, this is the church for which we yearn. Once we have tasted of it, no doubt the veil will fall from our sight and love will return to the faithful as part of their essence. The Church of Christ will become the blossom of the world and the hope of the penitent for a new man in a new universe. Amen. We implore Patriarch Ignatius to pray for us, to pray for the Church of Antioch, to pray for the Orthodox world everywhere, and to pray for the peace, for the peace in Syria, in the entire Middle East, throughout during this very difficult time. So we ask him and we entreat God to hear his prayer for us. May his memory be eternal.